Hi class, welcome to lesson 60, the final unit in unit 10, redox and electrochemistry. This is a very difficult unit with lots of new terms. Make sure that you begin studying early as your unit test will be soon. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to label, identify, and explain processes in an electrolytic cell and compare and contrast electrolytic and voltaic cells. Remember that Guided notes are provided to help you follow along as we are labeling diagrams. But if you wish, you can take your own notes, but make sure you include these diagrams. No matter how you take notes, make sure you have access to a Regents Chemistry Reference Table, as we'll need Table J to help us label the electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cells are different from voltaic cells. So from this picture, you'll notice that Voltaic cells always occurred in two beakers. An electrolytic cell will occur in only one beaker. Here, we will have a non-spontaneous redox reaction occur. Because the reaction is not spontaneous, it's going to re require a power source. In Regents chemistry, our power source almost always is a battery. Though, in real life, the power source could also be direct current from a outlet. Now, the, there are many similarities in all electrochemical cells, like anox and fat red cat, but the biggest difference is the charge of the electrodes switch in an electrolytic cell. So the cathode is negatively charged and the anode is positively charged. That is because the battery forces the charge. This is not a natural or it is a non-spontaneous reaction where the battery is in charge here. So again, you can see the similarities are that redox reactions occur. Electrons always flow from anode to cathode. The mnemonic device anox and fat red cat are always true and anions always travel to the anode and cations always travel to the cathode in the solutions that surround the electrode. Now with the differences, we're going to describe the differences that exist in electrolytic cells. So the redox reaction of electrolytic cell is non-spontaneous. The charge of the electrodes is switched. We only have one beaker and there is no salt bridge, but instead there's typically a battery So looking at this cell, let's talk about how we can describe how it works and label all the parts. So let's look and see if we can describe how a electrolytic cell works. So the first thing you want to do is you want to look for the battery, which I see here, and you want to use the charge to determine how the electrons move. So we know that electrons are negative and electrons are going to come out of the negative end of the battery. So here's where the electrons start. And this is a non-spontaneous reaction. So electrons are forced, negative electrons are forced to go to the negative electrode. So electrons are gained at this electrode. The gain of electrons is reduction. And this is still called the fat red cat. So this here is our cathode. And that means that the other electron, the other electrode is our anode. This is where oxidation occurs. So the electrons essentially are pulled up through the battery like this so that we can have a continuous flow. Now this is called the fat red cat because um, if this is the cathode, we know that cations in the solution are going to travel towards the cathode and they will connect with the electrons to form atoms on the surface. So the cations will migrate towards the cathode and the anions will migrate towards the anode. Notice that we don't need to use reference table J here because this is a non-spontaneous reaction. Many times in an electrolytic cell, 
the electrodes are actually made of the same material, it's because the battery is what is in control here. Now let's see if we can describe the workings of this electrolytic cell. Again, we can tell it's an electrolytic cell because there is only one beaker and there's a battery. Let's see if we can look at another practice question together. So here we started the battery and we started the negative electrons come out of the negative terminal of the battery. So electrons are gonna flow out of the negative. They're gonna go this way. And again, this is a forced reaction. It's forced by the battery. So terminal A or electrode A here has a negative charge but it's the gain of electrons, which is where reduction is occurring, and it's the fat red cat. So A is the cathode. And then B here would be the anode. So B has the same charge as the charge that it's hooked up to the battery. So if we follow the battery, we follow this. So B has a positive charge and it is where oxidation occurs. Now in this reaction, we, are, we have a reaction occurring again in one beaker. Um, and we see the battery also tells us this is an electrolytic cell. And so the key is the cathode, it's the fat red cat. So atoms will deposit on the surface of the key. Now, since that is the cathode and we have a solution of copper sulfate, copper has a positive two charge and the polyatomic ion sulfate has a negative two charge. So the cation will travel to the cathode. So this key made out of any metal will be plated in copper metal. Can you label the anode and the cathode, the direction of electron flow, and the direction of anion movement in the solution? Take a minute to look at this diagram and try and label the anode and the cathode, the charges, and the direction of electron of electron flow through the wire and the direction of ion flow in the solution. Okay, let's check your work. So the first thing you wanna do is look at the battery. So just following the charges of the battery, the negative side is attached to the negative electrode. The positive side is attached to the positive electrode. Electrons that are negative come out of the negative side and they travel here. So here we can see that we are gaining electrons and that makes this the fat red cat. So the spoon is the cathode and it has a negative sign. And then this piece of silver is the anode and it has a positive charge. And in the solution, we have silver ions, which are cations because they're positive, and nitrate ions, which are anions because they're negative. And the cations will go to the cathode. So in this case, the silver ions will surround this negative electrode. Um, where they're going to undergo reduction. So the reduction of silver ions to silver atoms occurs when we gain that electron that came from the battery. Um, and this spoon, which is made of any random metal, is now going to have a coat of silver on the outside. And at the anode, um, here we actually are likely going to have the uh, oxidation of silver ions occurring. But what we know is the negative ion, the negative nitrate ions will surround this electrode. Anions to the anode, cations to the cathode always.
This concludes lesson number 60, the final lesson in unit 10, redox and electrochemistry. Again, make sure that you've taken good notes. You bring your questions to class and you begin reviewing for your unit test starting now. See you soon. As a review, an electrolytic cell requires an electric current to force the non-spontaneous chemical reaction to occur. In electrolytic cells, we use electricity to make chemicals. And the biggest difference between an electrolytic cell and a voltaic cell is the sign or the charge of the electrodes. In all electrochemical cells, electrons flow from anode to cathode. So in summary, let's try and compare voltaic and electrolytic cells. Both processes include a redox reaction. Now in voltaic cells, the anode has the same charge as an anion, but in electrolytic cell, the anode is positive. In a voltaic cell, the cathode has the same charge as a cation, but in an electrolytic cell, the cathode has a negative charge. In all electrochemical cells, oxidation occurs at the anode. We can remember this with the mnemonic device and ox. In all electrochemical cells, reduction occurs at the cathode. We can recall this using the mnemonic device fat red cat. Electrons always flow anode to cathode. Voltaic cells are spontaneous versus electrolytic cells are not spontaneous. Voltaic cells are batteries. They do not require a battery. Electrolytic cells require a battery or a power source. This concludes lesson number 60, the final lesson in unit 10, redox and electrochemistry. Make sure you bring all your questions to class and begin reviewing for your unit test now. See you in class.